Number one is your effective empathy is more effective. Let me explain that to you. You know, if you are going through abuse, it's kind of hard to help other people who are also going through abuse because, um, well, put it in uh, put it in this perspective. Here's here's a soldier on the battlefield and he's wounded. He hasn't lost his empathy for his fellow soldiers, but he can't help them because he himself is wounded. So how do you help these people? Well, once you become uh, uh, once you become whole, once you are taken off the battlefield into the hospital, you're back in good health, and then you're in a position where you can help others. So your effective empathy becomes more effective. That's one of the signs that you are overcoming the trauma of abuse from those who um, those who abuse you, whoever they may happen to be. Uh, number two is uh, you really don't care what other people think as much as you did at one time. Let's uh, let's stop and think about this for a second. Um, have you ever been in a situation where um, a stranger just walks up and yells at you for no apparent reason? Uh, maybe the guy's mentally ill, maybe he's intoxicated, you don't know, but it, it, you're stunned, you're shocked, you're put off for just a moment. Um, but what happens if the same guy comes up and does it every day? Well, it's still kind of annoying, still kind of a shock, but he doesn't hurt you, he just yells at you, and uh, then life goes on as normal. Well, what is happening is your brain is becoming accustomed to... Uh, that uh, that abuse, but as you realize that the abuse comes to nothing, then well, it's it's uh, doesn't hurt you as much. Just kind of obvious. But that is the same thing when you are abused because you are an Aspie. I don't think it ever stops. Uh, but we become to we come to that point where we are recovering in a recovering mode, and maybe it just doesn't affect us as much as it used to. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that it doesn't still hurt and it doesn't still affect us, but because, yes, it does. But one of the indicators of recovering from abuse is that we are learning to adapt. We're learning how to deal with it more effectively, more efficiently. Number three is we become more self-confident. That's kind of similar to uh, number two, but let's put it in a different context. This is kind of like, uh, uh, abuse is kind of like going through boot camp. You learn to toughen up. You, uh, we could go back to the uh, analogy of a soldier. Before they put these guys out on the battlefield, they put them through boot camp. They intentionally hurt these people. They intentionally traumatize them. So they will become accustomed to it. So when they get out on the battlefield in real life and people are shooting at them, they're not, uh, they're not shocked by it. They, they are accustomed to it. Now, they, they still don't like it. In fact, it's even worse because in boot camp, they were trying to make it tough on you, but they weren't trying to kill you. But on the battlefield, yeah, it's really tough, but you're accustomed to it. So even though uh, as a person with Asperger's syndrome, life may become more stressful, you've been through boot camp. You've been there, you know, and it's time to uh, time to move on. And you can deal with it more effectively, more efficiently than you could before. Number four is this. We become, uh, well, that, that's the wrong way to say it. We, uh, we fret less or just less fretting. We don't worry about it. Um, years ago, there was a country song, and I can't remember the title of it, but the lyrics went, I toss and turn and then I fall asleep. I thought that was kind of uh, kind of amusing. Uh, one of the reasons I like some country music is because they have these catchy uh, lyrics to them that um, make them country music. But that is the same thing we're talking about here when we say less fretting. Um, okay, so this other person is a jerk. They're abusive. We get it. All right, so whatever. They need to grow up. It's not my problem. So in the past, maybe we would be bothered by it. Maybe we would stay up all night ruminating over this abuse. But uh, we're finding out now that, hey, uh, who cares what that person thinks? 
We may care if it's harmful to us or to others, and then we may take action to do something about it, but it is not one of those things that we fret about as much as we did at one time because uh, we've been through boot camp, been there, done that. Number five is we become refocused. The way that I say that is taking control and uh, self-control. We presume responsibility for ourselves. We're not expecting somebody else to take care of us. That is a sign that we're overcoming the trauma of abuse. We got this. We're taking care of ourselves. We don't need anybody. It's nice to have help. It's nice to have those outside influences that build us up, encourage us, uh, give us a shoulder to lean on, but uh, don't have to have it, or at least we don't need it as much. So we're more in self-control. We have learned to live one day at a time. We have learned to live one moment at a time. We have one opportunity to live today, and we're not going to waste this day by ruminating and thinking about how other people have hurt us and maybe still are hurting us. That is a sign, that is an indicator, in my opinion, that we are overcoming past abuse. Number six is we are more positive. Now, when I say more positive, I'm not talking about positive in the sense that... um, You go to one of these seminars where they teach you to be a positive thinker, or you read one of those books, you know, one of those self-help books. But it's kind of like uh, we're more positive because the weight of the pressure, weight and the pressure of uh, being abused is is not there as it once was. Years ago, uh, not too many years ago, I used to like to go out in the woods and hike. I like to walk, you know, um, couple miles, two and a half miles a day or so. And one of the things I would do is I'd put on a backpack and I'd put rocks in the backpack before I put it on, obviously. And that added weight to my walking. And so, you know, burned up a few more calories, uh, helped my endurance. But it was kind of amazing because you become accustomed to that extra weight. And then when you take it off, it's kind of like you're walking on air. Just amazing. It gives you that uh, positive feeling. And uh, one of the signs that we're overcoming trauma is that weight is lifted. Uh, we, we have a more positive attitude. It's kind of like, uh, yeah, we're walking on air. Imagine that. Being normal is walking on air. Number seven is happiness. Now, what we... When we use the term happiness, we're talking about happiness. What is happening now, as opposed to what was happening then. And so we are content with what is happening now, not so much with what was happening then. Even if we're still going through abuse, and uh, everyone goes through abuse of some kind almost all the time, continually, without fail. But we're more happy as we endure it because we have learned that uh, there are things to gain by going through abuse. We become stronger. We have those uh, that weight in our backpack that makes us stronger, and we appreciate the new strength. And we appreciate the opportunity. We are happy with the opportunity that we can we can uh, contend with life struggles more effectively, more efficiently than we could in the past. Had it not been for that boot camp, uh, we'd be in deep trouble. We'd have some serious problems. But now we are happy that we went through boot camp. We are happy, in a sense, not for the abuse, but for the endurance that the abuse gave us, that it taught us. I, I, don't, I can't think of anybody who said, yeah, I enjoyed boot camp. It's not meant to be enjoyable. It's meant to be tough. It's meant to be hard. But it gives us an outcome that is very positive because it strengthens us. It makes us, in the end, very positive, very happy. Number eight, we feel more fulfilled. Now, I know some people that have an attitude that um, they have this mindset that uh, I just wasn't meant to exist. If they have Asperger's syndrome, they may say, you know, uh, maybe I am a space alien. Maybe I am kind of weird. Maybe I'm kind of nuts. And maybe I wasn't uh, meant to exist. Maybe I don't have a life purpose. And we get into this uh, dark thinking, this funk 
mindset. And one of the indicators that we are overcoming the trauma of abuse is those thoughts are now diminished. Now, we may have them uh, a lesser degree of those thoughts. We may still have them, but they're not, uh, they're not mind-bending. They're not uh, weighting us down. They're not controlling us. We are controlling them. So we feel more fulfilled because we have made it this far through life. And hey, we did make it. We, we did endure the abuse and we're still moving one step in front of the other. So here I am approaching 70 years old. And from day one, I had to experience the abuses that people with Asperger's syndrome go through. That's one of the reasons I do these videos is I like to share with people what I've gone through because I know young people, you know, teenagers, young adults, adults, older adults. I have that empathy of what they went through because I went, I went through it. Not the exact same experiences, but the frustrations, the abuse that Aspies have to put up with. And guess what? I'm still putting up with it. Uh, there's still people who are abusive. And there will be until the day that I die. And I'm getting closer to that day every second. I guess everybody has come to think about it. But um, it's much easier for me to contend with the frustrations of abuse than it was uh, when I was younger. Now, maybe that's not true for you, but uh, if it is true, well, there's an indication that uh, you're getting over the abuse. Do you see those two rectangles on the screen? If you want this conversation to continue, click on one of those videos or one of those uh, rectangles and we'll keep on talking. If not, well, thanks for stopping by and we will see you next time.